Let me show you what's new on the Paperfall FX version 3. I took a lot of feedback that you guys had and that's what I worked on for this update. Now, first of all, how do you install these? If you are a new purchaser, meaning that you don't have a previous version, all you have to do is double click the DRFX file. If you have an older version, this is what you have to do. First of all, you're going to want to open Fusion and then go to Effects. Now go to the Templates section. Now Edit and then find anything right here. Now right click here on any element and then click on Show Folder. What that will do is that will open the folder or the path where all the DRFX files are installed. Here you will find the older Paperful Effects version, which will say V1. I changed the DRFX name on this version. That's why you have to delete the other one. Otherwise, you would have duplicates. And then simply delete that older file from there. And then just double click on the new one and install it right there. If you have a new version, when you double click, it will prompt you to install right here. And it will say install the Paperful Collage plugin or Paperful Effects. I actually call them both ways. And here I already have this installed. So I would just say overwrite. So I'm just going to cancel that for now. All right, now let me jump into what's new. First of all, I worked on fixing a bunch of things that had to do with the resolution, meaning that in 4K or in vertical formats, things were not working properly and they were getting cropped out. That was one of the main points of focus for this version. Now, also one of the things that people asked me was to add in and out controls, meaning that you want to deactivate the intro or outro or activate them. So I have those animation controls right here. And to make them work, after you click or deselect in, you would not have an intro animation if you have that unchecked. So it would just shows up like that. If I click in, then the animation happens. And then you also have all the other controls that were available on the previous versions. One thing I also did, and let me cover that already right now, would, because it's one thing that a lot of people asked me was, that there was this animation over the tracker information happening right away. So I deleted all the tracking information because I, some people didn't want to have that like as a default. So if you press go right here and then track backwards, then you can see that the actual image or element that you have moves with the papers. Now, some people didn't want that. And what ended up happening a lot of times was that this tracking information was set up by default, right? So when they added it to their element, it was basically out of sync. So the paper state or like the element that they had stayed moving. So let me show you what it looks like when that happens. If I deactivate the intro and you have the tracking info uh, tracked, then you can see that the media or the element still does that same animation. So if you get rid of that intro, you have to make sure to delete the tracking data. That way you don't have that weird movement, which is not really a glitch. It's just one option that it's not really a glitch. It's just something that you forgot that maybe you didn't want and forgot to take out because you have the option to take it out, right? So I got rid of the default tracking data. That means that if you want to have that special tracking um, flavor, I guess you could call these, because I like the way that it looks like when it moves with the paper that you add to it, right? That's why I added these. So if you want to have that, you have to go to the tracking section and then press go and then track backwards and also track forward after you have set your elements length and all that stuff. What's another new thing here? I added one new effect right here that you can that I can show you, which is this one right here. It's called Paperful Effects 15, which has a little bit of a different style to the other ones because it has like a ripped style and not really a fold out and it looks pretty cool as well and i have some good ideas for use cases for these in the future as well another thing that was requested by a bunch of you was that there was a way to create lower thirds with paper effects so i created a couple of defaults so i basically went and created and took the pictures of the papers with the focus of the lower thirds right here so you have this lower third now you have the options to adjust the text right here and you have like the controls for the actual paper as well and also the in and outro controls if you don't want to have either or being animated 
Now, I also added versions right here. Now, if you click on number two, for example, these will be brought to the center. If you click number three, it's basically just like a preset for the position. Now, there is one little issue with these the, with these versions right now is that each version doesn't really carry over the tags or any other values that you have from the previous one. So that makes it a little bit more complicated if you just decide to have it in any different position. So for now, what you can do, for example, is, is if you want to be, maybe you already have your text right here and you want to be actually on this side, you can go to three and then just copy these position X and bring that to position one instead of having to rewrite and adjust the values of all these other elements again. So yeah, that is the workaround for now. I will try to figure this out for like a future update so that the version only affects the transform values. But for now, that's how they work. So there are six, let me show you. There are six different paper lower thirds that you can adjust. And obviously, I made a previous video showing how to use this effect to create lower thirds. You can always use any of the other 15 effects that you have in the paperful effects to create your own lower third. So let me just jump into what is new in the transitions. I've added four new transitions right here. Paper right here. We have four new transitions which are just made from paper. This is this one is actually tape uh, that I just did as an experiment and it ended up working quite well and I really liked it. And yeah, so then, then you have a few others that are fold out transitions. Now on the transitions right here, we have a couple of new controls. First of all, we have the reverse transition, which means that on the previous versions, you only had the option of the paper coming out and bringing in that second clip, as you can see right here. Now we can actually start these and have the first clip collapse into the paper itself. So as a way to go out. So that is that was one of the requests that people had. And there's also the options to freeze your first or second clip, meaning that instead of having these continue to move, you can actually freeze that first clip. And then it just stays as a picture by taking this frame that we have right here. And for the second clip, it takes this last frame right here. So if you adjust these, it will take whatever frame is on this last frame of the transition. But if you don't want to freeze them out, you can just leave them like that. So those are the new controls on the transitions. Now on the verticals, for example, I actually worked on, and this is one of the things I had issues previously. So I had to go back and fix which was like on the on the vertical versions and they were just getting cropped right here. So they were not able to fill up the whole screen. That was one of the things that I've also fixed. Another new thing that I've added for these is a bunch of new pre-made elements. First of all, let me mention the generators and they are the numbers. That was another request by people. They wanted to have some numbers. So I added I think around 39 different numbers. So you have the list right here and they are all pre-animated. So you can just use them like these and you have the different controls right here. So that's pretty straightforward for the numbers. Another thing that I added was the torn paper textures. That's what I call them because you can add these to your clips just to make them look a little bit more interesting if you want to do that. Now I have already my thoughts on these and I have some cool ideas for future ones. So be on the lookout for that if you like these type of like textures to implement in your projects. Because for these, for example, what I would do is add a flash and then maybe pre-comp or comp turn these into a comp and clip and then make the image. So it is sort of like a picture that was like, and once the flash goes off, it just shows a smaller picture that is sort of like old or textured like that. So that's one of the things that you could probably do with these. But yeah, my goal here is to basically open the doors and expand your creativity, right? I don't want to put you in a box. I just want to provide the tools that allow you to create even cooler stuff or whatever comes to mind. That's why I try to build these cool tools like these. For the textures, they are pretty straightforward. They are generators. Now these work sort of like an adjustment layer because we have the apply mode right here. If you want to be able to change this, they have to work like that, right? So if you 
change the blow the mode right here the blending mode for example that's what happens otherwise you would have had to go to settings and then change the blending mode from here and it just makes things a little bit more complicated sometimes so but you still have this option right here always if you don't want to use the other one before i forget another feature that a lot of people wanted was the possibility or the ability to work with these things directly inside fusion so I work on making these usable inside Fusion as well. For the generators, they're pretty straightforward. All you have to do is drag and drop them right like that, and they should show up in there. Now for the ones that are textures, there's this thing here with the media in that is set up to be background. So you have to take into account these. So if you want to use these textures here, for example, one thing you could do is just replace this media in and add a background node right here and make that transparent that way you don't want you don't have to worry about any sort of media in that's in the timeline um messing things up right here and that's one of the things that you can do right here with the generators all the other generators work in the same way for example we want to drop a number right here and you're good to go now one thing that i would recommend is that if you for example don't want this to start at zero you would have to use a time stretcher and then try to play around with that where you want the animation to start right for example here we're gonna do 20 plus 30 and this is gonna be 30 right here now we have that animation right there so that's how you can work around if you want to work with these pre-made animated elements directly inside fusion now for the effects something similar will have to be done for example if you want to add this effect right here you can add this to the element that you have i already added the input element right here if you press play it will start at zero right now when you click the macro you have all the settings that you can change right here and the same thing that i mentioned with the generators if you don't want the animation to start zero you're gonna to have to use a time stretcher node to set when you want the animation to start if you're working in fusion with these effects i would assume that you already know how the time stretcher works because most people that are not advanced will most likely stick to the edit page while using these effects so that is how you can use these inside fusion those are the main things that have come out on the version 3 the main thing i focused on was to make sure that everything worked properly on different resolutions that was one of the things that people mentioned when i asked for reviews and feedback so that's one of the things that i took into account and that i really really try to try to fix right because there were some bugs in previous version as there's always bugs on stuff like these if you already have the paperfall effects make sure to update your version you can find the update files on your dashboards and if you don't know how to get to that, just check out your email and find your confirmation or purchase confirmation email. And that should have a link to your dashboard, either through Lemon Squeezy or through Fourth Wall. Now, if you're a new purchaser, all you have to do is go to paperfulleffects.com and there you can choose whichever store you like best to purchase the Paperful Effects version 3. In the meantime, keep creating cool things and using the Paperful Effects to create even cooler things and that is it for this video there are still more things to come so make sure to stay tuned and on the lookout for any updates that might come out for this toolkit make sure to check out paperfulleffects.com if you don't already have it and i'll see you in the next one here in Swati. bye